Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that you should bring with you on a riding adventure, trail, trip, maybe going to the dunes, stuff like that. So, it's really important that if you're going to be going on any sort of substantial ride with your side-by-side, four-wheeler, even dirt bike. You need to carry some stuff. Not so much with dirt bikes since they're kind of easy to get in and out of uh, tricky situations, but something like this that weighs almost a ton, you're going to have to have some certain tools with you. You need to be prepared. So these are the tools that I carry. Let's take a look at them. I'll put Amazon affiliate links below if you want to purchase them. I, I make like maybe six cents for every $10,000 ordered on Amazon, so it really doesn't help me out much, but I'd appreciate if you use the links to buy some of this stuff. So let's take a look and see what I got. What we have here is a Plano large storage trunk, and this one is 108 quarts or 102 liters. And you can find this, I got this one locally, I think... Uh, Home Depot had this one. I just kind of got lucky and it looked like it was going to fit uh, decent in the bed of the Armac, so I grabbed it. So you can see these holes here. Um, from here to over there is 16 inch centers. So what I ended up doing was drill in the box and then I found some old scrap pieces of C channel, drilled those, and then I just put uh, 10 mil or whatever it is, but so this is pretty this is pretty solid in here It's not going to go anywhere and then when you load this up with more junk It'll be even more substantial. All right, let's look at some of the junk that I have. We'll talk about it Okay, so I got an ammo container here. This is Nothing special. It's just something with a rubber o-ring pretty sturdy and I keep the loose stuff in here hand tools and whatnot It's got a small compartment that opens up in the top. You can put stuff in here and this is nice because if you need to help somebody, you can park your machine, take this out of your big box, and you have your, your tools in there. So this is basically waterproof. I mean, I don't know if I'd go chucking this thing in a river, but it does have a rubber O-ring on it. You can get these anywhere. So inside this is just basic stuff. I'm still kind of adding to it, um, but I, I feel like this is a relatively good start. So... Good flashlight, LED, little tape measure. Sometimes it's nice to know if you're going to fit certain places. A decent pair of vice grips. Um, those are good to have. This is a good um, um, Mora, Mora knife, Mora knife, Mora, Mora knife. And these are, this is a Swedish knife. I got a couple of these. These are really nice and they're pretty inexpensive. This one has a nice locking sheath so the knife stays in here good. You can kind of clip it on your belt. But it's always good to have a knife to cut rope and stuff. I have sockets for the lug nuts on my trailer. And I have a flip socket set for the lug nuts on the R-Max and for my truck. So I keep that in here. A four-way screwdriver, a locking multi-position knife. This uses standard razor blades. That's good to have. A Sharpie pen in case you gotta write something down or leave somebody a note. This is like an axle strap or a tree saver. It's a little bit small maybe to get around big trees, but if you need to put this around something that'll lock a machine down or you could put this around a tree and then I keep other shackles but here's a shackle that would go in here and then you could hook stuff up to that so that that's in here I have a couple of these I think it's good to have a few of them just in case so that's one of them but I have I have another one I usually keep one in the glove box and one in here a handsaw this one's locking, so it won't come down and uh, cut your hands off. This is just, you know, a cheap Amazon or eBay special. This is a NOCO 
like jump pack. So if you're on the trail, someone's battery's weak, instead of busting out jumper cables, you can hook this thing up. It will fire up any side-by-side -side on the planet. Uh, and then I have a few MacGyver wrenches. Again, nothing special here. These are just junk Harbor Freight ones. Again, I don't want to be bringing really nice stuff with me on the trail in case it gets lost or soaked or covered in mud. It's always good to have a bag of zip ties. You never know when you're going to need those. So that's that's a, what's in this little kit here. And I might add or remove some stuff depending on you know what I run into, but I think that's a pretty good a pretty good start. Going along with that kit, this is obviously too big to keep in there, but this is just a ch again. Um, I, I don't want to be spending a ton of money on tools that could end up, you know, damaged or lost or something like that. So this is just a cheap breaker bar from Harbor Freight. I mean, these are like ten bucks. So I'm. You might have noticed I'm kind of a Makita fanboy, but this is something that's going to be coming with me. It's a small Makita air presser, air compressor. Excuse me. This is really nice because you can take this and let's say you're going rock crawling and you want to lower the pressure in your tires to get better traction. You can do that and then when you are going to maybe get on a surface that's a little bit harder, you can get this thing out and set the type of pressure you need, fill your tires up. And it, it actually works really good. It's got a mode on here for PSI, BAR, and KPA, so it can you know fill up more than just tires depending on what other things you have. But really nice construction. Um, like most of their products, I feel like this will last a long time. I'm probably going to put this in a separate case so it stays kind of clean and nice because as you know, when you're riding, dust is going everywhere, and I want to keep as much dust out of some of these uh, vents and stuff as possible. So definitely consider getting something like that. Okay, I haven't opened this up yet just because I haven't needed it, and I haven't found my old one, so I'm hoping that I can find my old one. But this is uh, a squeegee for your windshield, and you see these at gas stations. It's the same thing. It's got the little foam deal, and it's got like a rubber blade on here, and you use that to clean off your windshield. So if you have a plastic or poly windshield like this one, it's kind of nice to be able to clean it off. The things you have to be careful with, using one of these on a poly windshield, you can scratch them really easy. So the one thing that I don't have with me is a spray bottle, but I will be rolling with a spray bottle and just some water. That way I can hose off the windscreen and use this to clean it. So spraying it lifts some of the dirt off, and then you could use this to not scratch your windshield and clean it nice. So again, if you, got, if you have a glass windshield, you don't have anything to worry about you can just take it and use this as is, just get it a little wet. So, you know, something nice to have, this is a good idea too. This I actually still need to put on, so maybe we'll do that in a second. This is a winch bump stop, so this goes on the front of your winch, and it, it allows you, when, when you're bringing the winch cable back in, it doesn't get all smashed up on the front of the winch. So maybe we'll put this on a little bit later but I picked this up again this was cheap these are nice to have so the light isn't too great back here but this is so this will go into your receiver here and now you you know I I'll take this out unless I need it because I probably won't want to hear that rattling but this will go in here and lock in place and then you have this nice big shackle so if you need to get pulled out from the back you have this on here. This definitely needs to go with you. This is a good tire plug kit. It's got everything you need to plug a tire. Okay, so in here, I try to keep things as neat as possible. So in here we have a 20-foot uh, toe strap. This is a 2-inch strap. It's taken me a while to find a good cheap, uh, cheap price, but decent quality, and I feel like this one's going to do it. So definitely a good idea to have a strap. Here's one that's often overlooked, and this is a definite must. You want to have a good snatch block. So something like this, if you have to change 
directions of your pull or if you need to double the strength of your pull something like this will definitely help and there's a lot of them out there that don't look that great in quality and it took some time and research to find one that seemed decent enough and this one definitely fits the bill it's rebuildable it's got a, a grease zerk on the back and it's it seems fairly heavy duty they claim eight tons I don't think it could do eight tons it would probably get destroyed but this is going to be more than enough for a side-by-side -side. get a good snatch block there's really good videos on YouTube that explain how to use them try to get something that's overrated you know if if this thing weighs a ton a four ton snatch block would be a minimum that I would get because you know the quality might not be that great so this one with this hillbilly Jeep on the front rated for eight tons it's you know it's probably going to be more than adequate for a side-by-side -side. here's another one that people often overlook that I think is a good idea to have especially if you're going in the woods somewhere is a decent foldable shovel so this one's made by Rhino USA don't let the USA fool you it is made in China unfortunately but this unfolds and then you can you know you can set it up to ha to be like a hoe like this or you can use this part like uh, as like almost a pick and then obviously it will go all the way out like this and then you just tighten it up it's got like a saw part you know I don't know what you're gonna saw through with that it's pretty dull but you know if you if you get stuck or you need to shovel out something this could get you out of a jam for twenty some bucks it's it's worth having I think alright so my wife was um, really nice and uh, uh, nice enough and she made me a, a first aid kit she's a nurse so I told her I'm like yeah I'm looking for first aid kits what should I get and she ended up making me a nice one she went to uh, you probably remember my wife I can uh, she is uh, a woman of few words let it warm up good it's new Ooh, your your top matches it do you like the new side-by-side you're a woman of few words. But yeah, so this, I feel like something like this, since you have more room to take stuff with you, it's better than buying those like pre-made kits that you find online. They're usually just band-aids. So this actually has good stuff in here that you're going to need. It's got, you know, she has the tape, gauze, elastic wraps, um, gauze pads, pain relief medicine, you know, Tylenol butterfly closures, there's band-aids in here too, but um, some cleaning spray, pain relief stuff, there's Benadryl uh, cream in here, stuff that you're actually going to use. You never know, it's always better to prepare for the worst, so spend spend 20, 30 bucks and, and get some good, some decent first aid stuff and get a nice box to keep it in, so this will keep everything clean and dry. When I go riding, I might even wrap this up in uh, plastic or something, another bag, just to keep it a little bit more safe from moisture and dust. But you, I can't stress this enough. Have have some decent first aid supplies. Obviously, when you're going to go riding, you're going to have water with you. You're probably going to have your cell phone or a good pair of walkie-talkies or maybe a handheld ham radio is good for communications. So, you know, think... Th plan for this kind of stuff because if you need it you're going to be really glad you have it so first aid don't forget it so really that's a good a good primer I guess to get started with what you're going to want to take with you on a substantial ride if you're just playing around in like an off-road park or something that's not really big probably don't need to take much but water and you know toe strap recovery stuff if you're going, if but if you're going on something more of a, a substantial ride where you're definitely in the woods, you're going to be around, or you're camping, uh, or you know, again, if you're if you're camping miles away, this is some good stuff. A few things that I want to add that I haven't yet. I want to get a good farm jack. Um, I'll post a picture of one of those, or like a like a high lift jack is a good one. For that, it's better buying the brand High Lift. Don't get the cheap stuff that you see, the 
offshore imported crap. I don't know if I'd trust those, but definitely get a good high lift jack. It's like everything fits fits good in here. Got the first aid. I found these old Milwaukee bags. Got the air compressor. All the recovery stuff in there. Got the toe strap, cool tools. There's still a little bit of room if you wanted to put some water bottles or something up there. And then this closes nice. You could even put maybe like uh, put like a towel on top of this so you have something to lay on or if you have to kneel on like a hard surface. So yeah, closes up good. Still got some room here. Spare, cooler, whatever. So yeah. And this uh, turned out pretty good. I like how that's nice and solid. I'm not going to hear any more rattles. And this is not going to flop around as much. So that's, that's worth it too. Well, as always, appreciate you guys watching, tagging along on this Saturday afternoon. And again, we're coming up to 2,000 subs, so I'm going to be doing that super clean giveaway where I will randomly select one of my subscribers to get a kit of nice cleaning products sent to them. So keep an eye out for that one. You guys hear that? Chakins! What are you doing? Get out of here, Chakins. Anyways, appreciate all the new subs. I really appreciate you guys liking and commenting on the videos. Thanks for watching. It means a lot. Stay safe out there riding. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later.